All right, so today, like we said, we're going to discuss no pain, no gain. This is something that a lot of athletes are familiar with, right? All right, Muhammad Ali just passed away, and he talked about he, he did not like a second of training, but he knew that he was going to become a champion because of the training. He knew that he did not put in the hard work. He didn't run the miles and do the last and do the push-ups and do the, the, the boxing. He would not be the greatest of all time. So as Christians, we got to understand that there's some things we're going to have to go through in order to receive that gain. All right, so we we'll have to send things. I'll get your mind rolling. So today we have a simple question. It's not a meaning kind of uh, thing where we have to do an exercise. But we're going to just hear from you. All right, we we're all saying this week. All right, just anybody went to the hospital and they had a little smile. Like, How do you feel? You know, one, are you not hurt at all? Ten, do you feel like, oh, this is the worst pain ever? Okay. So the question today is: is on a scale from one to ten, how difficult? Okay, will you rate life as a Christian? Think about it for a second and then feel free to raise your hand and we'll hear what you have to say. How difficult is it? You've been a Christian, maybe you are a Christian, maybe you aren't. If you think about it, is it easy? No. Is it a one? No. Is it a 10? Is yeah. It, that was a lot of, oh yeah. <laughs> is it a, uh, if you say it's a 10, why you say it's a 10? I heard a couple 10s. Cause everybody want to be a dime piece, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a great response. That's a great response. Okay, and there's scripture to back it up. There's scripture to back it up. Okay, who says it's like a one or a five or a three? I just think it's basically on how your life is structured. On how your life is structured. Okay, there's a good point. Okay, because. To back up the 10, I think it's a 10, because I'm just, everywhere I turn around, like, good grief, I'm supposed to make it. You know, because there's certain scriptures that kind of back up the fact that it is a 10. And it is a 10, I don't know your name, but thanks for your input, but it is a 10 because one scripture says, every time I attempt to do good, what's present? Evil. Evil. All right? So if I'm going around trying to do good all the time, that means evil is always right there for me wow. to do, right? So it's like, you know, the major green pill, red pill. I can do the good thing, or I don't the evil, like, hey, do me, hey, this is fun. What about taking my guilt? You know, Lord, for me, what you know, yeah. what you mean, is it, is it easy or hard, you know, if you let Jesus take it, is, is it's, it supposed it's to be supposed to be easy, right? It is. If we do it in our it is, there you go. Yeah. If you let Jesus Christ, it should be. Because he does say, take my yoke upon me for my yoke. It's easy, my brother. Like, he does say that, but at the same time, it is a complex response to that because Jesus Christ himself, if we document his death, he went through his life. He went through a tough life. He was rejected everywhere he went. He was crucified. He was talked about, spat on, pressed aside. He was, you know. Left for dead, mocked, all that stuff. It's all here. We talking right. So it is. It is easy in the sense we say, God, I just know you. You got me covered. I know I can just make it through this pain right here. I will gain eternity with you forever, and it's gonna be easy then. Because you just think about our lifespan, 80, 900 years. It's just, just just that. We just we're just a news cycle away from being old news. Right? Nobody talking about Prince anymore until they talk about the fact that he died of an overdose. Now everybody talking about Muhammad Ali until the next star dies, until the next person dies. But us average people who die every day, we don't get the news at all. Here today, going tomorrow, on to the next one. Harambe, the big gorilla, right? But there's a thing that says there's no one monkey. No one monkey is going to stop the show. So he's dead now. Did the zoo shut down? No. They open it up the next day, come see the Superman Gorillas. Come on, we still got a lot of money to make. So, we can understand a lot of that. Yeah, it's kind of tough right now, but if we do the right thing now, we fight all this stuff, we fight the oppression. Everywhere I look, there's trouble. It says we're pressed on every side. I'm perplexed, I'm confused. I'm, so, it is it is tough. If you live, you trying to live right, like, man, I'm trying to live right, but everywhere I turn around, I see sin. 
I can't even leave out of my house. I can't even turn on the TV because sin is around me at all times. So I, I think it's pretty difficult, and it seems to be consistent. It is pretty difficult. All right, but here it is. Okay, we're going to discuss this today. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Oh, we come through a lot of translations, but today this is one specifically uh, stood out because of the word press. We're going to talk about pressing today. All right? So it says, now that I've already obtained all this, this is Paul writing. Now he's saying, I'm not perfect. Just because I'm up here standing before you and trying to teach you how to live right, I got to teach myself too because Sister Chris could say, man, damn, it ain't all in now. Yeah, I can believe that. Oh, Reverend and oh, Brother Boone and oh, Holy Ghost. Hold on now. My mom could tell you, shh. Hey, huh? <laughs> That's not the time, amen. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Right, I had we none of us have got it there. The bishop, the ones on TV with the mega churches, the ones that think they're all there, you know, the ones who drive around in the big fancy homers and Cadillac, they ain't made it. They ain't made it either. They gotta pray to God before they get up and teach just like anybody else. Okay. Uh, it says, I've already uh, arrived in my goal, but I press. Says, I'm pressing on to take on hold of this for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Christ put it out there for me. He died for me so that I could be saved in spite of my sin. I'm pressing. It says, brothers and sisters, I did not consider myself yet to take a hold of it. This is the Apostle Paul who saw Jesus Christ in the flesh, right? He was on his way to the mass. He got knocked off his donkey. Oh, Jesus. Wow. This is a young man who's credited with writing over two-thirds of the New Testament. So here he is saying, I'm not holier than thou. Okay? So you know somebody who thinks they're holier than thou, just pray for them. Okay? This is the best we can do. He says, but one thing I do, I forget what is behind, and I'm straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to which uh, to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So there's a goal each and every one of us has. There's some person we're supposed to be in the body of Christ. Somebody should be singing up here every Sunday. Somebody should be praying. Somebody should be helping out. Somebody should be here every Sunday. Like what Miss Phyllis prays more, it is until God compels them to say, you know what, God, you want me? Let me go and do something to serve you. This crusade is our reasonable response to worship God. It is our reasonable, meaning that is the only thing that makes sense. God, I was on the hospital bed 10 years ago. The anesthesiologist could have killed me. I could have woken up. I could have not been able to say a single word. Could have been slurring. My speech could have been done anything. I'd have to make it. But since you saw fit to bless me, I ought to just do, commit my entire life to serving you. Doesn't that make sense? It's like an eye for an eye, two for a two. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. God, you want me up today. I'm going to do something to glorify you. God, that 18 wheeler did not run off the road. I saw him swerving all on the interstate, but God, I'm a, I, ooh, I thank you. God, ooh, ooh, you, you kept me out of there, and when they hit me on the head, when I could cut my finger off, and when I could have died, God, you did all that for me? And you know I'm so dirty, but you still love me enough to bless me, so the only thing I can do is bless you. Because it's the only thing that makes sense. So, we're going to leave the word press, because we coached a basketball game on Friday night, a lot of us from basketball, we don't want to press. What does it mean to press? I mean, when someone is pressing, what does that mean? They all up on you. They, they won't let you breathe. All up in your chest, your airspace, right? But in the sense of saying that I press as a verb period, okay, it means that I am going against the grain. I'm struggling. Meaning that if these people here, this is us as Christians. We're this girl right here with the ball, right? We're pressing. We're there, she's getting pressed, but it is to actually be pressed. She's trying to go up the court, but there's people trying to keep us from going up the court. There are things that are trying to keep you from being a man or woman of God that you should be. It's called sorriness, <laughs> laziness, all right, uh, apathy, we don't care, just mediocrity. We just we just don't get it. And we're just we just say, hey, you know what, this is too, too tough. I'm just gonna let them take the ball from me. I'm going to travel with the ball. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to do something I don't need to do. But as Christians, we are to press. So as we press our way forward, we continue to make our way forward, there are five things that we can do. Five things. If you take notes, it's a good time to take notes. If you're on Facebook, whatever, I'll send it to you. Email, all right? But five things we can do while we are pressing because we are reaching forward. If our goal is to get out the door as safe and as clean and as holy and as righteous as we can be, 
There are a lot of obstacles trying to keep us from getting out the door. There are a lot of obstacles trying to keep us from getting out of crying in heaven. There are a lot of obstacles trying to keep us from being a faithful husband, a faithful wife, a faithful uh, man or woman of God to, to just do what God said. There are a lot of things that are trying to prevent us from getting up the court. So here's five things we can do. Number one, we can pray without ceasing. This is an acronym, all right? The first thing for the P, we need to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing means what? Always say a prayer. Always say a prayer. There's always somebody who will make you want to say something other than God bless you. It's not going to be a situation that's going to make you want to say, oh my goodness, I need to act out of my Christian character. But here's what the Lord says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. People all say, I want to know what God's will is for me. What does God want me to do? This right here. Be happy all the time. Pray all the time. And give thanks all the time. Yeah, because it's always something. We say all the time, if it ain't one thing, it's another. All right? I got uh, I had to get my brakes fixed. First of all, I got some brake pads. He's like, Mr. Bill, come look at your car. Uh, your road has been eating away. Instead of $179, it'll be $564. We take cash, credit, or charge. What? Then you get home, uh, we need some groceries, baby. What? I just spent $564. D Daddy, can I get a game? So I just paid my brakes fixed and, and, and hey, man, we need a new couch. What? <laughs> can y'all, one problem at a time, please. Because cause God allows things to happen to keep us on our knees. Because think about it, you had a fairy tale life, everything's just your head in the air, you climb everything close. You was you ever take time to say, God, I thank you, or God, I need you. You get the big head saying, Oh, this is me. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, look at me in my five. Now. Look at me. I did this. I haven't been sick in 10 years. Look at me. This Things happen to get our attention because we serve a jealous God, all right? And anytime we get to stray off and think, you know, it's all about myself, God has a, yo, come on back, turn around, worship me. This kind of God we serve, right? Cause, but think about it when, it, when we pray, it is like the time to make an adjustment, right? Think about basketball, man. Uh, when things don't work out, we got to get on our knees and pray. It's like having a timeout, okay? We played a game on Friday night, first quarter, eight to zero, coach. Uh, we played the man to man, and that didn't work. I said, time out, time out. We got to make some adjustments. <laughs> this ain't working. <laughs> this ain't working. It'll be 42 to 0 before we're out of here. So we got to make some adjustments. So when things happen in your life, like, man, my marriage ain't working out like I thought it would be. Uh, time out, time out. Uh, Heavenly Father, I need you to just help me be the man, the husband I need to be. Touch my wife to be the wife she needs to be. Bless our family. All right, break. Then you go out and try to execute. Time to make an adjustment. Okay, things aren't going on in your job. Man, my boss is this horrible. Okay, let me call a timeout. Okay. Uh, hey, God, it's me again. I know I had five timeouts, but you can, I come to you whenever I need to, right? Okay, great. So can you just help me on my job? Because if I don't if I don't stay here, I won't be able to eat because a man don't work. Don't you don't eat. <laughs> so can you just help me to have the patience and endurance to just bear this boss and touch my boss's heart so I can make it? And Jesus ain't hey, amen, break. You make the judgment, you go execute, okay? Then, God, my, 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 that's all y'all make a cap? Hold on, time out, time out. God, it's me again. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Can you help me with a better job? Help me to use my money right so I can make it? Because, I mean, you said in your word that we're lenders and not a bar, so I need to make some adjustments. Break, can't go. All right, then you get home. Oh, my leg ain't feeling right, I can't sleep. Time out, time out. God, it take me. <laughs> I got a little pain in my body. Your word says, by your strength will heal. So can you just move within me right now? Just say the word, just speak. Because you got like, that got the faith. You got, okay, you got that you got break. Make the adjustment. You're good to go. So as Christians, we can always pray. You can pray right now. You can pray on the ride home, whatever it is. Just say, God, it's time you make an adjustment. And once she gets to go on a word, you got to make sure you go execute it. Because we with these little boys, they eight years old. And, all right, you can stand right here. This just fine on the floor. This just fine. So I'll sit around like, huh, man? What's what we, what we doing? What? what? And then like, he just scored on you. Because we aren't necessarily executing the game plan once we make the adjustment. But the first thing to get rid of the prison, we got to pray. And then the second thing, we got to refuse to lose. 
Y'all see this frog right here? This frog said, man, I ain't going out like that. <laughs> you talking about the going out like that? The devil give you a left, he give you a right, he give, he give you the best he got, be like, uh-uh, Satan, it ain't that easy, play. You gotta, you gotta fight. I got the spirit of God living in me. And this is what God encourages us in 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. He says, but as for you, as for you, my children, all right, he says, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Don't give up. Don't stop because it's only five of y'all. Keep working. <laughs> Don't stop because the, the neighbor has a problem with the fence. Keep working. <laughs> Don't stop. Don't ever give up. Because there ain't no way we have come this far to say, God, I'm just, man, I just can't take it. I've been married 18 years. I don't live until 19. Hold on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Be strong and do not give up. Man, I've, I've, been, I've been this far, I've been 10 years that I smoked, I've been 10 years that I just had, I had talked to her and all this time, I just, just keep on going. Okay, because as Christians, we're made to progress, not digress. We're made to go forward, not to go back. Or, and as you look at Lot's wife, she was leaving the Sodom War, God says, just don't look back. I said, do just keep going forward. She looked back and she was destroyed. So as Christians, we gotta know, first of all, we gotta pray all the time. And then we gotta say, I'm just not gonna lose, I refuse to lose. Hey, then we gotta do this, we gotta exercise our faith. A lot of us have faith, right? We say, I got faith to solve the mustard seed. We know faith to solve the mustard seed can move a mountain, but we're not exercising our faith. Okay? It's like me having a, a, a brand new Samsung Galaxy 7, right, bro? These things are supposed to be waterproof. But how else are those waterproof? I don't put it on the water. I'm not exercising my faith. Peter here, this is Jesus saying to Peter in Matthew 14, 20. He says, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. He had to have the faith. But if he would have just stood in the boat and said, I believe you, but he didn't do anything about it. This is, we just, we just, God believe you, but we're not, we're not stepping out on faith. We're not stepping out. Because, but we have to have faith in action, but we have to understand we have a God who has proven results. I see a lot of proven results right here. A lot of people have a faith. Ms. Barbara prayed for you last week about feeling bad about the pain. Here we are, proven results. People pray about this building, okay? Can we have it? We got it for free. They wanted $30,000 for this building. When you saw this building the first time, it was not worth $30,000. They got it for free. People in hospital beds, people in jail, people locked up in bunches of their mind. We have a God who has done it. We got to put our faith in action. One thing is say we have something. Like what if you doesn't have a million dollars in bank? You don't, you don't, you you afraid to buy a car? <laughs> you afraid to, to ball out? I mean, you, you, we got all this faith, we just sitting on it. Yeah, I believe I serve the Lord, really? Can't tell. <laughs> so the next thing we gotta do, we gotta stop worrying. Be like this lady right here. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, okay, big deal. You think I'm concerned about it? Offense? You think I'm concerned about what the survey says? You think I'm concerned about the price of gas going up? You think I'm concerned about a lot of stuff that's going on in the world? No. I serve God. It says this is Jesus Christ. So a lot of times we saw when we were, we, we think we these great people. When we were, we were going against the will of God because Jesus Christ spoke this. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's proof right there. This, this is 18. Each day is a tough day. You might say, oh man, I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to give you a hot brain feeling. I'm going to chill out. But God, but each day has enough trouble <laughs> of its own. So here it is. When we were, we do further damage. For number one, we're sinning against the word of God. Okay? We understand that disease, when we catch things like cancer and we get sick and all that stuff. Disease, if you look at the word, look at the root is ease. Correct? Look at this, that is the prefix. So this means we're not at ease. So this is what happens when we get sick, we get diseases, because we're not at ease, because we're worried, because we're stressed. Stress comes when you don't believe you can do it. You don't believe you can do it, that's why you're stressed. Like, man, can we get, can we get this job done? People bite their nails, but they don't believe they have what it takes. LeBron James bites his nails, you don't believe he has what it takes. When he's on the bench, he's like, I don't know if we can get this done. I mean, I've been in the finals, this is my seventh time, and uh, uh, I don't know if I can do it. 
Uh, but God still let us to relax. Don't don't worry because He says take take my yoke because you let me have it. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. So the thing we gotta ask ourselves, we like to keep it personal. These ones here. If I truly trust in God, then why do I worry? If I truly trust in God, then what am I worried about? Because there's a saying that says, you pray, don't worry, right? If you worry, why even pray? Why even pray? It's like saying, great example here. When I took my car to the dealership, I did not go in there and check on my car at all. I said, I came to you to fix it, people. I paid you $500, fix it. I'm going to sit down and eat this popcorn. I'm going to sit down and watch this TV. I didn't go over there and say, hey, were you, you doing that right, sir? Huh? Is that, is that, is that, does that go right there? Did you put the boat back on my tire right? Did you, I just said that. And when they said, Mr. Bull is ready, I said, let me swipe this car and get out of here. We don't question humans. Mm. Ladies, get the hairdress. You don't say, girl, is that the, you wash my hair right? I feel a little danger patch. I mean, did you, did you break? Well, most, most of them say, most of them, you know, did, you know, did you, girl, I mean, is that the right color? Nah, you just trust professionals to do their job. You don't go to the restaurant and say, let me, is it, is it inspector right? Is it, is this food at 32 degrees? But we question God every day. Like, God, you really going to fix that? No, I don't think you fix it right. Let me fix it myself. You didn't put that brake pad on right. Let me go ahead and get my hands dirty. But that's what we do. But the last thing we should do while we pray is very simple. We should just smile. In the midst of the praise, because like, praise confuses the enemy. I know a lot of times it's hard to praise God because we go into a lot of stuff. We go into the praise. We say, all right, right, then we'll get up and say, and praise God. It's kind of hard because you think about all the stuff that's going wrong in your life. But if you just get up and praise God, the enemy looking like, why, you, why, you, why is he laughing? Why is he smiling? Why does he have a song, a, a dance? But why? Hold on now. I know all the trouble in the world around here, but he's walking around here like everything's okay. He's one of them Jesus freaks, right? Like, what's wrong with him? But here's why we should smile. Because here's what Job said. Y'all know Job, right? He lost everything. And he had all these horrible sores. And it's like, how in the world? His wife was crazy, but tell him just curse God and die. But here's what Job says. He says, I know. Not I believe, not that I hope, not that I'm thinking, not that I'm figuring, not that I have faith. It is I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end, He will stand on the earth. We got to know that all the pain we go through, all the stuff we go through, in the end, when it's said and done, when we depart from our bodies, you got to understand the trip of our bodies. I know I'm kind of going on. But the trip of your body is your body wants you to feel good. Your body wants you to experience all this fun stuff because your body knows you only have 80, 90, 100 years. So in all that time, you got to have all the fun you can have. you got to experience all the pleasure you can have and enjoy all the great sweets and candies and cookies and highs and lows and all that great stuff because your body only has so long. But your spirit is like, no, 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 no. Let's do what the Word of God tells us to do. But there's a battle going on. But we should smile, okay? Here is the conclusion of the matter. We just got to keep pressing. Like the Word says, don't just give up. Don't say, I'm tired of trying to do the right thing. I'm tired of trying to love my neighbor like I love myself. I'm tired of trying to do what's right. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. We just got to keep pressing because the Word just assured us that in the end, God will stand here. Every knee will bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All your hard work will be worth it. When you depart your body, you go to be the Lord. Like, wow, it is really worth it. All those atheists were wrong. All the Muslims were wrong. God, you do exist. Jesus Christ, wow. All my hard work, all the time I said no to the world and all the pleasures of sin, it was all worth it. The pain was worth the gain. I get to live with you in eternity forever. Muhammad Ali had a great saying, a great example. He says, imagine eternity is this. You are in the Sahara Desert. Millions and millions and millions of pounds of sand, right? He says, imagine you pick up a grain of sand. That one grain of sand represents a thousand years. That's a thousand years. Okay, put that grain of sand down, pick up another dollar, and it turns like all the grains of sand in the Sahara Desert. Jesus is imagining that gain of spending forever with Jesus Christ in heaven. That is something to go through the press for. Are y'all ready to go through the press? Because we must go through the prayers. We gotta go and be the light because that's the whole reason why we're here. We have to show others 
that there is still a God. God is not coming down until he's ready. So we got to be that light. So my question now is if we just keep on pressing and realize that it's worth it, are we ready to go and be the light? Yes. Glory to God. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give God a round of applause. Know that he will be the one who gives you the power to make it. It is his power. It is his spirit that works within us. The very spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the grave. So there's no, no excuse why we can't get it done. All right, no excuse. So here in the lab is very simple. Uh, we have a very, very uh, down to earth, simple confession of faith. We know that life and death is in the power of the tongue, correct? Yes. All right, so we believe that God's word is making me wiser. God's word is making me stronger. And God's word is making me better. Glory to God. Woo!